um, TikTok on the clock in China. His Majesty's government has banned TikTok, the Chinese video sharing app, on all official devices. We're following the United States, Canada, several European nations, and even our friends on the European Commission in banning the said act. Is this popular, whimsical act, app just some fun for our children, or is it a sinister tool of indoctrination used by the Communist Party of China to steal our data via the back door? And if it is, why are we only banning it on official government devices? Are the people not also worthy of the state's protection, or is this, in fact, just an overreaction? Now, I must um, confess that I allow my children, allow isn't really the right word, I can't stop my children uh, using this app, so it may be that the government couldn't stop us using it, but I do wonder, if it's too dangerous for a Secretary of State, surely it's too dangerous for my children. Anyway, I've got a brilliant panel with me uh, today, Toby Young of the Free Speech Union, and author and writer Ella Whelan to discuss this with me. Um, Ella, are you taking TikTok off your telephone if you had it there in the first place? I'm far too old for TikTok. It's something <laughs> that is uh, definitely for a, a younger generation. I mean, you know, the interesting, interesting thing, I, I'm surprised that any people who work in government would have it on their phone anyway, unless they're kind of spending their time watching cat videos. There's probably a few apps, as you well know, that, some, that a lot of ministers might be and politicians might be deleting off their phone. Um, that's that's kind of seems to me pretty bog standard. And if and I also think there's a sort of element of um, not quite virtue signalling, but it's this kind of tokenistic because if the government is worried about um, influence from the Communist Party, well, there's you know this sort of thorny issue of Hinkley Point. You know there are that this is so if if you really want to do something in terms of make a sort of stand against um, alleged Chinese influence or spying or whatever, this is kind of paltry. Um, Toby, you're always in favour of free speech, so you can't be in favour of banning anything, can you? Well, I'm actually quite sympathetic to banning the use of TikTok on ministers' phones. Um, there is, uh, when, when you sign up to TikTok, you grant TikTok the right to access your data, including your contacts, and it also keeps a track of where you are geographically. So I think, you know, if, if ministers can be tracked in that way, if their contacts can be hacked effectively via well, can't the app... Well, be hacked, tracked by the CCTV, which is all Chinese anyway? Well, that may be true, and maybe they should think about um, <laughs> banning that too. But, um, I mean, you know, uh, the, the, the company that owns TikTok maintains it's a private company, and there is a kind of Chinese wall, as it were, between it and the Chinese Communist Party. But under China's intelligence laws, the Chinese government can at any point point demand that a private company cooperate, turn over their data. So I think for security reasons, it does seem sensible. And we're just following um, in the footsteps, as you said, of the EU, the US, uh, India, Belgium. So it seems like a kind of fairly elementary precaution. If ministers still want to use it, like Greg Schaps, they still can. Grant Schaps, they, they can just do it on their private phones rather than their official phones. Um, Ella, do you think it really matters? Or is it essentially trivial whether people use TikTok or not and that we're getting sort of, sort of very frightened, it's sort of reds under the bed territory? Well, I mean, Toby makes a good point in terms of, you know, I think there probably is. And there was a, there was a sort of revelation a few months ago about the fact that there had been chips in cars that were being used by ministers and, and by politicians to be ferried around. And that could, that, you know information could be gathered about where, their whereabouts. And I suppose, I mean, I'm, I'm not a detective, I suppose that could be useful to someone at some point. Um, but I think in terms of, you know, having uh, uh, access to independent media or problems with the internet and privacy and things like that, I mean, we've got our own homegrown problems with that. You know, well, haven't, there... haven't we given up that actually our telephones tell everything about us and that they can be hacked by hostile states if they feel like it and that TikTok is tokenistic that uh, so much of our data is open anyway. If somebody wanted to know where any of the three of us was and they could be bothered, they'd find it out very quickly, wouldn't they? Yes, they could. And I think probably there is an element of, I mean, I, I mentioned Tinkley Point, there's, a, there's an element of, um, of this sort of kind of being a tokenistic measure, I think, or at least a sort of a, a display of, of being seen to do something um, about China, which isn't going to particularly help a kind of growing East-West 
uh, you know, a pretty serious east-west tension um, for kind of broader discussions about geopolitics. But in terms of, you know, it, it, most of us aren't saying anything interesting that the Chinese state or anyone else wants to know about. But there is, if we want to talk about sort of freedom online, free speech online, privacy, things like that, I mean, we're not far, we're not, we're not quite at the CCP level, but we're not far behind in terms of the way in which our government um, and whether it's through the online safety bill and or different pieces of legislation, polices and controls what we can see and interact with. Well, we have more CCTV in this country than almost um, any other country in the world. I think portion of the population in China may be up there with us. Um, are you worried about this? Do you, but particularly from the Chinese angle, do you think they can be bothered to follow us so closely? Well, I suppose in some ways, perhaps we're kind of flattering ourselves if we imagine that, you know, there are armies of spies sitting in some big anonymous building in Beijing monitoring our movements or the movements of junior government ministers. But, um, you know, and of course, if they wanted to hack, you know, um, other apps on our phones, they probably could. But why make it easy for them? And another consideration is that Instagram, Facebook and Twitter are all banned in China. So, you know, for the Chinese to now kick up a fuss about this seems a little bit hypocritical. Oh, so you think we should do tit for tat, but isn't that where trade wars start? Isn't this terrible policy, actually, and that we shouldn't be so fretful? Ella? You, I mean, you're, 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 you've said, Hinkley point, that's really major. TikTok is small potatoes. And, well, I mean, the reality is the government needs China's... I mean, we need China's money. So this is, uh, you know, that this is why I'm kind of being flippant about this, because it's small fry in terms of actually engaging in any kind of serious discussion about what these two countries, the relationship that these two... The fraught relationship these two countries have. Um, but the, you know... Uh, <laughs> if we want to talk about security in Parliament and, you know, spies and access to information, things like that, there does seem to be a bit of an issue. You know, whether it's certain politicians blabbing to people at the bar or, or having sort of sus suspect friends or things like that. I think most people, you know, would say that that's, a discussion about that is probably not trivial. Or giving all their WhatsApp messages to a journalist, exactly. which didn't need particular Chinese <laughs> spying.